Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Hey, we're anxious to get back in our Father's Word. Guess what? Going to start a new book uh, this, this uh, particular session. It's going to be called the book of Genesis. We teach you that Genesis is a Greek word, a Greek word meaning creation and uh, from the beginning. Actually, it started uh, probably with the Septuagint. And the actual name in the Hebrew is Bereshit. Bereshit, which means in the beginning. And that's, that's exactly what it covers in the beginning. Now, as we cover this, I want you to think to yourself, when was the beginning? That's very important. We have many channels of thought in this direction of how old the earth is. We have many reports from the scientific community. We have certain from the unlearned, I will say, religious community. We have some from the religious community that are pretty well right on. And I trust that we fall in that category. So with that having been said, Genesis has many likenesses, even if you would, to the apocalypse, that is to say, to the book of Revelation. The um, Satan was uh, fell in, in the first chapter of Genesis, uh, when we know what the Hebrew is speaking of, and he's kicked out of heaven in the book of Revelation in chapter 12. The tree of life is taken away from man in the book of Genesis. It's given back in the book of Revelation. The earth became chaotic in the chapter, the first chapter of the book of Genesis, and it was rejuvenated or, re, or made anew in the book of Revelation. You could almost teach the book of Revelation from the book of Genesis. Um, if you were to use God's record and understand as we go why God does things. Why, he, why did he destroy the first earth age? And that's why you must be aware of the first earth age. And we're going to document it probably in this lecture, if we get that far along, whereby you will know and understand there was an earth age before this one. That's why that that uh, science and as well as anyone that has an eye or has any study in archaeology or uh, geology can tell you how old this earth is, millions of years old. And God's word declares it is. There's no argument there with a learned person from God's word. So with that having been said, let's get right into it. Genesis, in the beginning, chapter 1, verse 1, and it reads... In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. He, there, I noticed the two, both heaven and earth. And then period. Did it say when? Of course it did not. It simply states that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. You know, I want to do something who was with God when he accomplished this? You have to find that out in the book of Proverbs. And it's in the 8th chapter of Proverbs. And this is wisdom speaking. Wisdom was with the Father at that time. We're going to take a little time. I want to do this whereby you follow along. The 8th proverb, verse 22, and it reads... The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Again, in the beginning. Before his works of old. Even before that works of old, which is to say the first earth age. Wisdom naturally was with him. Why? Because all wisdom flows from God. Verse 23. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. Before the earth was even formed, even in the first earth age, I was with him. That's to say wisdom was. 24. When there were no depths, that means there was no ocean, I was brought forth. When there uh, was no fountains abounding with water, 
wisdom was with the Father. Verse 25, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was, I brought forth. I was here. 26, while as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. That means even the least little atom of the world. Wisdom was with him. Why did I cover those verses? Because I want you to see that many things are mentioned in God's word concerning this subject. And people simply are not aware of them. Now, do you think God ever created anything in chaos? Do you think God ever created something bad coming out the gate? The answer to that is no. Why? Because wisdom was with him. Before the first stone of this world was formed. And wisdom does not agree with chaos. Now, how did chaos come about then? Well, let's read, let's understand. Verse 2, of back in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved, I repeat, moved upon the face of the waters. Now, this would be very hard to understand if you, did, if you didn't understand a little bit about the Hebrew manuscripts. This would read in this second verse as though God created it void and without full form. Now, this term in the Hebrew is tuhuvavuhu. You with companion Bibles, uh, it will back me up on this, or you can take your Strong's and check it out. But the truth hinges on the second word, that is to say, the, in this verse, um, the fourth word, I should say, in the English, is the word was. That's not correct, actually. I want to pull up, if we may, the Hebrew word that is utilized for was, and you will find that it is heva, a primitive root, and you can compare it to 1932, to exist or become, come to pass. In other words, the earth wasn't created void and without form. It became void and without form. When? When Satan rebelled, when, when a third of God's children began to follow Satan, there was turmoil. And God did destroy that first earth age and brought in this earth age. So what you're talking about here as we begin in the next verse here in a little bit, we're going to do a lot of documenting of what I'm saying first. There was the overthrow of Satan's power, spoken of in Ezekiel 28, as to how he was a, uh, actually an archangel that was supposed to cover the mercy seat, as it is written in that 28th chapter of Ezekiel. And he began to take pride within himself and began to have the children of God worship him instead of God. To, because of one thing, pride, pride within self. So it's important that you know the earth wasn't created that way. The earth became void and without form. Why? God destroyed that that was. And it is written, and I'll be most happy to document that for you. Let, let's go, if we may, to the great prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 45, and let's read of this. Remember what I said, that, um, that void is without form, absolute chaos, meaning there is zip, not a nothing. And in that 45th chapter, in the 18th verse of the great book of Isaiah, it reads, listen carefully, for thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He did what? He formed it and he made it. He hath established it. He created it not 
in vain, not in Tuhuk. He formed it to be inhabited, not to be destroyed. He formed it, he made it, he created it good to be inhabited by who? His children. I am the Lord and there is none else. So there is one documentation that the earth was not created without form. It was not created void. He created it beautiful. This is why that from the world that was, we can find mammoth uh, in the tundra, the ice of uh, uh, in Alaska, still with buttercups, that near the North Pole in their mouth. Lush legumes growing even in that part of the world. That's why we can find palm trees at the poles. That is to say, the petrified woods that are left behind, documenting that it was a beautiful time. It was a beautiful place until the earth became void and without form. That is to say that God uh, destroyed it. That's not the way he created it. He created it to be inhabited, and then it became that way, without form. Verse 19, God continues to speak. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. That is to say, to again. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. So, if God declares things that are right, then why should there be a dissension, disputes? All you have to do is clearly listen to what the Father says. He did not create the earth in a chaotic form. It became that way because of Satan's rebellion. And we'll document it even further yet. You know, there is one particular chapter. As a matter of fact, let's go to the New Testament. Let's see what the New Testament has to say when you have the ability to think for a moment and leave off the traditions of men and let God speak to you. He doesn't hide the truth. It isn't hidden. You just read it for yourself. If you take a moment to check it out, in the second book of Peter, in chapter 3, he tells you to be very careful because in the end times, there'll be people come along, scoffers, saying, it's not going to happen, that is to say, Christ's return. And then he begins to tell us about the plan of God, of the earth ages and the heaven ages, not different earths, and not different heavens, same earth, same heaven, but different ages, like the world that was of old, which God had to destroy. And the remnants of that destruction are obvious. I personally do not understand how someone can take a drive through the petrified forest in this great nation and not realize that upheaval from the earth that was when you see those giant pines turn to rock because of the ages gone by and many other places that we uh, discover and so forth. Okay, about the three different earth ages, let's read about them. Second Peter chapter 3, I want to pick it up in verse 5. For this speaking of these scoffers, for this they are they willingly are ignorant of. Now I didn't call them ignorant, God did. That by the word of God, that by what? By some man, no, by the word of God, the heavens were of old. And the earth standing out of the water and in the water, not created under it, but God creating it whereby the earth could be inhabited. The flood of the overthrow, not Noah's flood, but Noah's flood out of your mind. But let's find out, I don't want you to be ignorant of it, I want you to read by God's word what happened. Verse um, 6, whereby the world that then was, that's to say the first earth age, being overflowed with water, perished. Now, 
Do yourself a favor and check this word perished out in the Greek and find out that it also means void and without form in a sense, in that it means nothingness. It, it doesn't give leeway for some man to be out there with a family floating around in a boat or an ark. I mean, there wasn't any pigeons, no birds, no doves. It perished, fini, period. Void and without form, totally. That's why, that again, a scientist can document that this earth is millions of years old. Why? Because it is. And God's Word declares it. It was of old. And then you get some Bible thumper will come along. My Bible says this earth is only 6,000 years old. He shows his ignorance concerning the manuscripts and the simple Word of God simply by listening to men's traditions and their fear of being, uh, of digging into God's Word because of repeating some salvation baptism over and over and over, regardless of how many times you've been saved or how many times you've been baptized, that's all he can do is own and own, yakety yak, baptism, salvation, which there's nothing wrong with that as long as it was the first time. But after you uh, lead someone to the Father, then teach them the Word of God, whereby they are not ignorant, biblically illiterate, of events that have transpired where they cannot with credibility discuss with an educated person in the sciences the Word of God. That's important. <clears throat> so, he destroyed it. It's written right here in the New Testament. Now verse 7. But the heavens and the earth which are now this would be in Peter's time, and yet even into this day. By the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition, there's that word perish again, of ungodly men. Now, who, who is it that's going to, the, the perdition means to come to, a, to uh, nothing, nada, uh, to perish. It didn't say those that followed God were ungodly men. The rudiments are the evil things of this world will be destroyed by fire. And what is that fire? If you were to back up uh, two books, I believe it is before this in the book of Hebrews, and if you were to read the final verse of chapter 12, you would find that God is a consuming fire. Which is simply to say, if he can speak and everything became, nothing became everything, he can also speak and that consuming fire will cause to perish that that is evil. Verse 8, listen carefully, beloved. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. In other words, if we say that God replenished or um, recreated the governments, that's to say the peoples that are here, in seven days of God's time, how long would that be? He said, I don't want you to be ignorant about this. What it does, people talk about the Lord's day. Well, a day with him is a thousand years. That's a millennium. Then you should know what the millennium is then. That's, that is the Lord's day that is yet coming. But time-wise, seven days with him is 7,000 years when you're figuring it from his standpoint, all right? Listen carefully. Many people, uh, why do I say that? Because many people, when they find um, creation where man is obvious 13,000 years ago, they almost lose their, their faith. Why? Don't let your ignorance override your donkey, all right? Um, overload your donkey, I should say, because not, a little knowledge can be a dangerous thing. So think and use your head. God pleads with you to not be ignorant concerning these things. Verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, 
as some men count slackness. He's, he's not forgetful, but is long-suffering to usward. He has much patience, not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want that to happen to anyone, but that all should come to repentance. They want, though, but at least it's God's will that they would. He's given them every opportunity. He isn't looking for someone or some group or some tribe to zap. He made salvation available to one and all, whosoever will. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens will shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up check out the word element stachion it means rudiments which means only the evil part will be destroyed only that that is good is left behind in other words, the Holy Spirit touches your heart and it warms you. But the Holy Spirit will utterly destroy Satan and those that choose to follow him. And that, quite frankly, brings in the Lord's Day, which is the millennium, 1,000 year period. Again, let's analyze. It is not God's will that anybody go to hell, perish. That's to say the lake of fire, Revelation chapter 20. It's not his will. He is very patient. And the figure of speech as a thief in the night simply means nobody's going to be expecting it, going back to the fact that people would be saying, scoffers, it ain't going to happen. Everything is the same as it was from the beginning. Well, Shaw, they don't even know when the beginning was. So let them scoff. But don't you be ignorant of the fact that the world that was of old was destroyed by water. There was no olive branch to bring back after that happened. If you think Noah's time is what's being spoken of, it's not. There was no raven because there were no birds left. And certainly there was no man left, as it is written. As it's written, where? Where is it written? In God's Word. Have you, haven't you ever read it? It's written very plainly in the fourth chapter of the great prophet Jeremiah. Let's go there. Let's document these things whereby you are brought into knowledge because God didn't hide these things under a rock. God didn't speak from some hidden place to keep it a big secret. It's here if you wish to absorb it, whereby you're not ignorant of how things are. I'm not saying that to put anyone down, but I'm saying that to wake you up to the truth and to absorb the wisdom that your Father has so graciously given you in this Word, and by this Word, these things were done. Jeremiah chapter 4, let's pick it up with verse 22. Now let, let me fix the place here. God had been threatening to a degree. And what, in a sense, what he's doing here, he's saying, hey, you had better take that threat seriously because I did destroy it once before. And if you don't think I will do it again, try me. Basically, that's the thought our Father has in mind. Verse 22, Jeremiah 4. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children. That means they're stupid children. And they have none understanding. Why? Because they do not have that wisdom, nor do they seek it. They are wise to do evil. Oh, they know the ways of the world, how to skin their brother before he skins them. But to do good, they have no knowledge. No, none at all. And even in many of the so-called houses of God, is the truth taught there really? as to what happened in the beginning? Well, I don't know. You can probably judge that. You've been in a few of them. Is it or isn't it? I'll let you answer for yourself. 23. I beheld the earth. Now, I want you to look at, I want you to see through his eyes. 
Beheld means I looked upon the earth. And lo, it was without form and void and the heavens, and they had no light. This is after the overthrow. He's going to tell you how he shook it up, how he destroyed it. 24, I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. In other words, I put my hand on them. I shook it up. 25, I beheld, I looked, and lo, there was no man. I mean, I destroyed them totally and completely off the earth. No Noah floating around, in case you're thinking flood of Noah. Forget it. We're talking about before man was created in the flesh. Well, then what is this man? Well, what man? Of course. There, there was no man left on earth, that is to say, sons of God. They were removed. Why? Because it had gone corrupt, and God destroyed it. And all the birds of the heavens were fled. They were gone, perished, not a one. Let me say, make a statement. You have seen and observed in many places a species of birds found in, um, in the um, uh, mineralized form or fossilized, we'll call them, and that don't exist anymore. And I assure you, there is not one species today from the earth old, of old, that carried over. They all died. God recreated, yes. Were some of them alike? Well, I'm, I'm sure that he never created anything necessarily bad. It goes bad. That there is a likeness. But we find results of this katabo, this overthrow in the earth today. Verse 26, I beheld and lo, the fruitful place was the wilderness and all the cities, whoa, wait a minute, yes, all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his furious anger, the wrath of God. Yes, there were cities. Well, where are they? Well, um, least, lest I go into dimensions, those that know, I will say, think on that line. But um, in the dimension of spiritual bodies, sometimes it's difficult for we, while we're in the flesh body, to understand. But there were cities, and they were destroyed. Nothing left, period. Verse 27, For thus hath the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. And he didn't. He did exactly as we're about to read in this first book chapter of Genesis. So what can we summarize from this? There was very clearly an earth age before this one. That's why we find fossils and the remains. There's no getting around it. I could even whip out my mammoth tooth. This is from that earth age. This is one tooth of a, from a mammoth. And I would judge this is about 10 million years old. So this particular animal um, would have perished um, even before the katabo. So here you can see this is a grinder. That's why we know it was a mammoth. It wasn't a carnivore. But these things have to be explained. They're here. And it turns many young people away from Christianity because there is no explanation. Many of these young people would say, show me a dinosaur in God's word. It's here. It's known in the book of Job as the behemoth. The behemoth grazed on the mountaintops, not in a riverbed. And he had a tail that was as big as a cedar tree. And there's only one of God's creation that has a tail like that. Well, a whale does, but a whale doesn't eat off the top of the mountains. And that's a dinosaur. 
And in that particular part of Job, God is talking about that first earth age, the age in which he had to destroy. And many might say, well, why would God destroy something that beautiful? Because of Satan. And Satan's fall, inasmuch as Satan, as it is written in the book of Revelation, chapter 12, drew a third of God's children away from him. The Elohim, God and his children. Or the sons of God, as they are most often called. And God had a choice. He could destroy the children and Satan zoop, right then. But God is long-suffering. That means he's very patient with his children. So rather than destroy them at that time, he chose in his wrath rather to destroy the first earth age, when this, this earth was pretty good at that time. No winter and summer, but just plush all around this earth. People had it real good. I would bear in mind the documentary we did concerning the angelic footprint. Yes, they were here. That documents it, and they didn't look like a monkey because it's a perfect footprint. And, well, let's see if I can whip one of those out here. I may not. Yep, I can. Just, uh, this wasn't planned, but this footprint is set in stone, and it's about, uh, I say about 10 million. Uh, one university person thinks more like 50 million. The high arch of a very young foot. This was when they were in another form, and yes, they were, every man was taken from the earth. And some might say, man, are you calling the angelic beings men? Well, what do you think Gabriel means? In the Hebrew tongue, what does the word Gabriel mean? Translated fully rather than transliterated. It means man of God. Man, M-A-N, man of God. So you see, there are many things that have passed on before us, and God's word declares them. I suppose the question is, are you wise enough to listen to the simplicity in which God teaches them? Like he said, hey, I didn't hide in some dark place to say this. I made it very plain in the word, my word, God's word, that the things were of old, and I shook it. I destroyed it. Every last being off from the face of the earth, heaven wasn't destroyed, the earth was. But he destroyed it. And rather than destroying his children, think about it. We serve a God of love. What does it take to have a parent kill one of his children? Think about it. It's a heavy way to go. That's why God didn't kill them. The third, that simply were deceived by Satan. He rather chose to destroy that earth age and caused man, as we're going to study in, fur in further lectures, to be flesh also, that each soul would have to pass through this earth age to make his or her mind up, born innocent of woman, whether they would love God or Satan. That's what it's all about, and that's why you're here. You see, contrary to what many people teach, there is one thing God will not do. It's just not in him. He's not going to do it. And that is to say, he's not going to force you to love him. Because whether it is you or God, you can't force anyone to love you. It's fake. He wants you to love him from within yourself, you with free will, having that option of loving him or the ways of the world, which is to say Satan. The choice is yours. But I assure you, you have been warned by our Father what happens to those that follow the ways of the world. By that I mean love Satan instead of him. Because God will not put up with false love. He knows your heart and mind. He knows whether you love him or not. 
Love is very important to him. Do you know something? It's important to all of us. We like to be loved. We like to be needed, wanted, and we like to be appreciated. And when someone we look upon has been as good as to us as our Father has, you can't help loving him if you come into knowledge and the wisdom of what he has done for us, even down to coming to this earth himself to die on the cross, that in the form of the Son, the only begotten, to show you that he didn't feel he was too good to do what he has asked you to do. That is to say, live in the flesh. So we have a wonderful father. So rather than destroying his children, he destroyed the earth age and brought this one into being, which we'll pick up in the next lecture. Hey, don't miss it.